How often does Auburn flipping a prospect push Alabama to number one in the recruiting rankings? Well, it happened, and we're going to talk about that. Bama back to number one, according to our friends at On3. It's the third Saturday in October matchup. I know some of you will be like, well, it's technically not the third Saturday in October. since It hasn't been since 92 every single year. Who cares? That's what they call this matchup. Uh, thank you for clarifying, but it's Alabama and Tennessee, and they call it the third Saturday in October matchup. I can't wait. I know a lot of you guys can't as well. Some of the experts feel like this is going to be a pillow fight. I want to get into that. We'll talk right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel about Bama and Tennessee and more. Thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get this show started. Uh, roll Tide, everybody, and thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Let's talk a little Bama. Uh, I know there's uh, a lot that we can get into right now, but I wanted to start with recruiting because Bama's back to the number one recruiting class again, and I think that's a big deal. They have slowly and methodically gone back to number one after they got there and then had a couple guys flip, right? Remember, and ironically, they went to Auburn um, and Antonio Coleman and Robert Smith. So now... It's Auburn going after Ohio State and uh, number one Alabama player in the state, five-star Naheem Offert, who Bama's tried to get flipped from Ohio State to Auburn. So that tells us a couple of things. It's not like Auburn has any kind of momentum on the football field. I mean, they've been terrible. Their head coach has been under fire for throwing players under the bus. They're still not a terrible team, but they're just in the SEC and it's hard to win. But why would anyone want to go there? Well, NIL. And, and they've got good recruiters and they've got money. And so that is kind of saving them right now as they struggle. And they are struggling. But they've been picking up some momentum. And then Alabama as well. You know, the biggest thing here with the recruiting these days is keeping the guys that you have uh, committed. And Alabama has some five stars. Ty Haywood, Keelan Russell, the quarterback out of Texas, Big Mike Carroll, Caleb Cunningham, who we've had on this channel before from over in Mississippi, a five-star wide receiver. Uh, Dijon Lee, who's from out in California. You know, those are kind of the, the guys that you would think, hey, this class is built on. But there's other guys, too. And, and some of these guys, like Daryl Duke Johnson, are like, look, I'm locked into Bama, and uh, that's where I'm going. I'm pretty happy with that place. You know, he said that after the Georgia game. Uh, but A.K. Deer, who's somebody else that we followed, the running back out of Mississippi, and I think he's one of the best players, uh, you know, in, in the country, and it's going to be exciting to see what he could do. But, you know, can Bama get some players to join this class? And they still have some room to add players, and the guy that I've kind of been hoping that Alabama would get is Justice Terry who is a five-star defensive lineman out of Manchester, Georgia, right? So this was a guy that was going to come to Bama, and then the hurricane came and moved this high school game. And uh, you, know, just, you just hope that the recruitment stays open and maybe you're able to pry him away from, from Georgia, which is where you would think that he's going to end up. Another guy that Bama's kind of been connected to is Ivan Taylor, who is a super safety, one of the top 100 players in the country from West Orange High School in Florida. You know, they're, they, they're not even done yet. And, you know, you just keep on pounding away when it comes to recruiting. You want to keep the guys that you like, and then, you know, and hopefully you you add to the class, but you find loyalty. And, and it, when you get a great recruiting class, what will happen a lot of times is, like, guys like Ryan Williams will help you recruit to that recruiting class or the next class. So, He's been a special player. Jalen Mbakwe, another guy from last year that was, you know, kind of helping bring all of these players together. Hey, we want to play on the same team. You want to have that. Alabama needs to make sure that they continue to attack the state, which is where, where honestly, where Auburn has been putting all the resources, trying to take advantage of the fact that this Alabama coaching staff is coming from the West Coast and they've done really well nationally. But, you know, are they going to be able to recruit statewide and, and in that 300-mile radius that Nick Saban dominated? You know, that's, that's something to keep an eye on. But, um, you know, we'll keep an eye on that as well. 
But Bama, uh, thanks to the uh, the flip of Offert, passes Ohio State for the number one recruiting class. You know, they of course they they added the uh, the edge rusher. Uh, earlier this week, uh, taking him away from Mississippi State. But uh, slightly ahead of Ohio State, LSU third, Auburn all the way up to fourth now, even though they're the only team of the top five that doesn't have any five stars. They're they're uh, at four, Georgia five, Texas six right now, but still a long way to go before you actually sign these players. Now, injury report, Bama's injury report, heading into Knoxville for this game Saturday against Tennessee. Uh, it looks like this. There's three guys that are on the list, and I'd be surprised if any of these guys play. Probable, questionable, uh, Kendrick Law and Kobe Prentice. Prentice probably, to me, would, would be the guy you would think would have the best chance of playing. Law got the lower leg injury against Georgia. Uh, we've seen him, but you know, is he, is he going to be ready to go? I mean, that's, that's a question that you got to ask yourself. Uh, it seems like they're kind of teasing us, thinking that maybe he'll be ready. But he's been so integral to the offense as a blocking wide receiver. And I mean, he's a speed guy. He can do it. He can catch and, and make moves and stuff. But it's been his blocking that's helped spring guys loose. And that's something that Alabama has certainly missed on the offensive side of the ball since he went down. And then Kobe Prentice, you know, got sandwiched uh in, in in the game against Vanderbilt, knocked out of the game. And we haven't seen him since. I figure that he's probably – close to returning, and then Yonze Pierre, who uh, is somebody that was a former five-star player, really impactful type guy on defense. Uh, again, uh, you know, you see him on Instagram. He's get, having surgery. I, I, I don't know when he's going to be back. Probably not too long, but uh, my gut feeling is that we're not going to have any of these guys for the third Saturday in October matchup, and it is the third Saturday in October uh, this Saturday, or at least a, a name it is, right? Alabama against Tennessee. Now, forever, this game was always like, you know, calendar-wise, that would be the third Saturday. Sometimes it's the second. Sometimes it's the fourth now. But it's in, in October. I mean, it's hard to make schedules these days. It's not like it used to be, you know, when you're scheduling around like eight teams. You know, now you got 16 teams in your conference, and you just got to make it work where it works. Uh, but what's good, though, is that when the SEC kind of realigned and they got rid of the divisions, that – this is one of the matchups that I wanted Alabama to keep. I, I didn't care about the LSU matchup as much. I wanted Auburn and Tennessee. I mean, those are the historic games. And Bama's dominated this series. Uh, 20 games better than Tennessee historically. Uh, and they've won 16 out of 17. So before Nick Saban got there, all of a sudden it looked like maybe Tennessee, thanks to Philip Fulmer and the success he had, would actually catch up with Alabama. Bear Bryant, you know, had a, a really incredible run against the Vols as well. Uh, and then, of course, Tennessee had success against Alabama. Uh, but, you know, right I, I, the, the Shula days, you know, Shula had a tough time beating Tennessee. Philip Fulmer was, uh, you know, kind, kind of like a Nick Saban light style of football anyway, you know, where you just dominate at the line of scrimmage, run the ball you know, do enough with the wide receivers, play great defense type guy and and uh, you know, kind of smothered Alabama there for uh, a time. And I think Tennessee at one point in one, uh, eight out of 10, but it's back in Alabama's favor. Although this year feels like this thing is uh, very close. And I, I thought it was interesting. This is what Paul Feinbaum said. Um, and, you know, I'm not the biggest Paul Feinbaum fan, but sometimes you got to give him his due. I, I kind of like what he said, and I'm going to tell you why both, of these teams look like each other. They look like they're incompetent lately. Uh, Feinbaum went on to say, I mean, Alabama and Tennessee are matching each other for stupidity, really. Um, look, you watch those games on Saturday, and it would hard, it'd be hard to argue. You know, I mean, watching Alabama make mistakes, the the sacks and the the safety, and then at the end of the first half, and the onside kick, and the fourth down touchdown that led to the onside kick, and and and, and it just felt like Bama tried to give the game away, but South Carolina didn't want it. They they gave it back to Alabama with their four turnovers. Uh, Tennessee against Florida couldn't block. They they didn't look great on offense. They did enough against the Florida team that is just really bad. And if Graham. Mertz isn't hurt. I think Florida probably beats them, right? But they they always have trouble against Florida. They're going to be fired up to play Alabama. And I was really surprised 
that Bama was a two, two and a half point favorite. I guess it really comes down to Bama's explosiveness. But what I'm hoping is that Coach DeBoer has something up his sleeve like he did for Georgia for Tennessee. It's going to be a tough place to go and win. There's going to be 100,000 people there. Uh, it is a 2.30 game, which I like probably better than a night game. And uh, it'll be the setting will be perfect for college football. Now, if you're going, it's a 3.30 Eastern time kickoff. But um, I, I get what Feinbaum is saying, although this is a get-right game for both of these teams. Alabama wins this. All of a sudden, you're coming back against Missouri. This isn't a Missouri team you're going to look over. Uh, you got to play LSU. You still got to go to Oklahoma and play Auburn. So it's a very tough schedule for a team that lost to Vanderbilt. But if you're Alabama, what you hope is that you can get back the momentum you had first half against Georgia, where you really showed what this team is all about. And just like the recruiting class, maybe you can get this team back to number one if you know other teams lose, and you can get back to playing that dominant style of football. You know, for Tennessee, this was the this was the the signature win for Josh Heupel. And when you look at their team, Nico, their quarterback, hasn't been able to connect on a lot of deep balls. Alabama's going to have to put pressure on him, keep the ball away from wide receiver Squirrel White, who's going to get his catches. He's a, he's a good wide receiver. He's one, probably the best player on the team to me. Uh, but Dylan Sampson's another guy who uh, who can run the ball. Uh, he's he's elusive running back. He's tough. So those those three players on the, the Tennessee side are the type of guys that Alabama's going to have to really pay attention to on defense. But for the Tide, Jalen Milrow, you, you got to be able to throw the ball to open up the run game, uh, but you can't run the ball every single play. And, you know, uh, it, I mean, throw the ball every single play if you can't block. And that, that kind of felt like Bama has not been able to really establish a true rushing game with Jam Miller and Justice Haynes. And part of that is that Milrow is going to get touches too. And I think Milrow, honestly, is a better running back than both of those guys right now. Maybe in the future he won't be. But uh, the passing opens up the run. Tennessee's actually got a really good defense, too. So uh, Bama's explosiveness, they're going to see a lot of blitzes, going to see a lot of pressure. Can How can they handle that in Knoxville on Saturday? But it's it's one of my – it's my favorite matchup. I love the orange and white. I love the crimson and white. I like the the helmet game. I, I like the, the tradition of this one. Let's smoke a cigar afterwards. And, um, you know, we uh, are excited about it. I mean, this is what you play the game for. So – Anyway, uh, that does it for the show today, uh, guys. Again, um, you know, heavy hearted as we we still mourn the loss of our friend Brett. We're going to honor him on the tailgate show Friday with, uh, you know, with something special. But uh, thank you, guys. I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Um, the the outpouring of of love has been amazing. So thank you so much. Hey, let me remind you this, too. Uh, as we roll on, um, that we're brought to you by Pearl River Resort over in Philadelphia, Mississippi. The, the folks at Pearl River are uh, fantastic too, man. They they they've taken great care of us here on our channel. They have the Golden Moon Casino in there. Is the Time Out Sports Lounge? You roll in with your buddies, and uh, you can go in and and uh, table games and slots. You got the timeout sports lounge where you can bet on sports just like you do out in Vegas. It's a Vegas style sports book, all the 20 TVs, three kiosks, a, a full bar. They've got all the games from every major sport, college and pro that you can bet on, sit in there and watch fights, MMA, all that stuff. They have it in there. And they've also got the, you know, the, the, the live counter, if you need any help filling out, your forms. But if you spend $50 in there, you can go to dancing rabbit golf course, which is the Augusta. You can play and you can play it for just $40. So, uh, you know, take advantage of that, the spa. And I'll tell you, it's never a bad time to go to a spa, get, get those shoulders worked on a little bit, relax. Uh, but, and some great concerts coming up. Scotty McCrary is going to perform there. You know him from American Idol and then Gary Allen. He's a really good, uh, talented country singer. So, Check them out as they celebrate 30 years at Pearl River Resort. Guys, thank you for hanging with us, and roll tight, everybody.
Rubber Resort.